Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Frank, and before I continue with my story, please like and subscribe to hear more about surviving toxic family dynamics. I'm 28, working as a marketing executive in Chicago, and today I'm finally ready to share how I dealt with my mother's addiction and the enablers around her. Mary, you're literally the only one who can handle your mom. She needs you. My Aunt Diana's voice echoes through the phone for the hundredth time this month. And what about what I need, Aunt Diana? I've been handling her since I was 12. But she's your mother. Story of my life. I hang up and stare at the skyline from my office window. Most people see a successful woman who climbed the corporate ladder at record speed. They don't see the exhausted daughter who's been mothering her own mother for 16 years. You won't believe what Mike bought your mom for her birthday, Emma says during our lunch break. My best friend has been my rock since college, understanding the addiction drama better than anyone. Please don't tell me. A fully stocked bar cart, chrome and crystal, real fancy. That enabling piece of, you know what? Never mind. Did I tell you about last Tuesday? Another episode? Found her passed out on the bathroom floor. Mike was passed out on the couch, useless as always. Had to call 911 again. That's the third time this month, Mary. I push my salad away, appetite gone. The hospital bills are piling up. She maxed out her credit cards, so guess who they're calling now? You need to stop paying them. They'll come after her house. Maybe that's what needs to happen. Later that evening, I'm sorting through mom's mail, another task I've inherited. Bills, bills, and more bills. The sound of bottles clinking draws my attention. Just having a nightcap, sweetie, mom slurs, Mike's arm around her waist. It's 4 p.m., mom. Don't be such a buzzkill, Mike chimes in. Your mother works hard. She got fired three weeks ago, Mike. Or did she not mention that? Mind your own business, princess, he sneers. This became my business when I started paying her mortgage. Mom starts crying right on cue. You don't understand how hard things are for me. Actually, I do, because I've been cleaning up your messes since middle school. Remember my 13th birthday? When I had to call an ambulance because you mixed pills with vodka? That was different. Different from last week, or last month, or when you passed out at my college graduation. Aunt Diana bursts in, perfect timing as always. Mary Frank, how dare you speak to your mother that way? How dare I? How dare all of you? You keep enabling her while I'm drowning trying to keep her alive. Mom sobs louder. I promise I'll change, baby. I'll do better. Just don't give up on me. I've heard this promise so many times, I could recite it in my sleep. Emma's words from lunch echo in my head. Maybe she's right. Maybe it's time to stop catching everyone before they fall. Looking at them, Mom swaying on her feet, Mike smirking, Aunt Diana glaring. I realize something has to give, and for once it won't be me. I stare at my bank statement in disbelief. $3,000. Gone. The withdrawal location. The liquor store two blocks from Mom's house. You gave me that card for emergencies, Mom whimpers when I confront her. Vodka isn't an emergency, Mom, and this isn't the first time, is it? I lost my job. I was desperate. You lost your job because you showed up drunk to the board meeting. My phone buzzes. It's the police. Mom took my car without permission and wrapped it around a tree. Thankfully, she's alive, but my car's totaled. At the hospital, Mike's already there, running interference. Your mother's fragile right now. She doesn't need your judgment. Fragile? She could have killed someone. Everyone makes mistakes, princess. You think you're so perfect. Perfect? I'm keeping this whole family afloat. The intervention was a joke. Mom sat there, mascara running, clutching Mike's hand while Aunt Diana made excuses. She's under so much stress. We all cope differently. Maybe if her daughter was more understanding. Later that week, in Dr. Cooper's office, I finally break down. I can't take it anymore. Every time I try to help, they twist it around. Make me the bad guy. What patterns do you see in your mother's behavior? The crying, the promises, then the stealing, the lying. God, I sound so cold. You sound aware. There's a difference. Walking into Mom's house that evening, 
I find her and Mike ransacking my old bedroom. Where's your other credit card, Mary? The gold one? Are you serious right now? Don't be selfish. I raised you better. You didn't raise me at all. I raised myself while taking care of you. Mike steps forward, towering over me. Listen here, you ungrateful little b- Back off, Mike. I'm calling the police. Mom collapses into her familiar sobbing routine. Please, baby, don't do this to me. I'll change. I'll go to rehab. I'll leave Mike. Anything. Like you promised last month? And the month before? And at Christmas? I mean it this time. I look around my childhood home. Empty bottles, overflowing ashtrays, unpaid bills. Years of memories, most of them painful. I'm done. This is it. I'm leaving and I'm not coming back until you're actually sober. Not promising to be sober. Actually sober. You can't abandon your mother! Aunt Diana shrieks from the doorway. Perfect timing, as always. Watch me. And Mom? Cancel those credit cards you took out in my name or I'll report it as fraud. I mean it. You wouldn't dare. Mike snarls. Try me. I'm not that scared little girl anymore. I walk out, hands shaking but head high. Dr. Cooper was right. Awareness isn't coldness. It's survival. Got everything set up? Emma helps me adjust the hidden camera in my purse. Audio and video plus the banking app recording all transactions? You sure about this? After finding out they're running insurance scams? Absolutely. Walking into mom's house feels different now. Every tear, every guilt trip. I'm documenting it all. Baby, I'm so glad you're giving us another chance. Mom hugs me, reeking of vodka at noon. Found these lying around. Mike tosses some paperwork on the table. Sign here, princess. It's for your mom's new insurance policy. I pretend to sign, secretly photographing everything. Later, I call my cousin Jennifer. Wait, Aunt Linda made you sign insurance papers too? Yeah, lost ten grand. Mike said it was for medical bills. The pieces start falling together. Five relatives, all scammed. Each story worse than the last. You won't believe what I found. Emma rushes into my apartment. Mike's got priors. Insurance fraud in three states. Domestic violence. My phone rings. It's Dad. Mary? I heard what's happening. I'm flying in tomorrow. Dad, you don't have to... I should have been there years ago. I'm not failing you again. Mom's crying on my voicemail. The bank's asking questions. Please, baby, I need to borrow your social security number. Perfect. Every word recorded. Meeting Mike at the bar, his idea. He's sloppy drunk, bragging. Your mom's good for something. Signing whatever I put in front of her. Just like her daughter. That's so? I keep him talking, my phone recording everything. Dad arrives, looking older but determined. Got the files you asked for. Police reports, bank statements. Mary? Mom barges into my apartment. Why are the insurance investigators calling me? Maybe because you and Mike filed claims in my name? He said it was legal. Like the credit cards you opened? The loans you took? Mike bursts in, face red. You little snitch. Careful, Mike. Assault charges wouldn't look good with your record. What record? The one from Nevada? Florida? Or should we talk about the domestic violence charges? Mom turns pale. What's he talking about, Mike? Show her. Dad steps from the shadows. Show her everything, Sarah. I pull out my laptop. Insurance scams, theft, fraud, all documented, all recorded. You recorded us? Mom shrieks. Like the time you threatened to kill yourself if I didn't give you money, or when Mike said he'd make me regret it if I didn't sign those papers? That's illegal. Mike lunges forward. Not in Illinois. One party consent state. I checked. You planned this? Mom whispers. Had to. It was the only way you'd ever face reality. I'll destroy you. Mike starts. Try it. Everything's already sent to the insurance investigators. Should be an interesting case considering your priors. They leave. Mom crying. Mike threatening. Dad puts his hand on my shoulder. You did good, kiddo. Emma brings wine. Think it worked? I hold up my phone. Another call from the insurance company. 
Oh, it worked. Now we wait. Asterisk breaking news. Local business owner arrested in multi-state fraud investigation asterisk. I watch the headlines scroll across my TV screen as they lead Mike away in handcuffs. His past finally caught up with him. Emma sits beside me, scrolling through her phone. Three states looking for him. Guess running insurance scams under different names wasn't so smart. The phone rings. Mom's hysterical. The bank is foreclosing. They say all the insurance claims were fraudulent. Mary, you have to help me. No, Mom, I don't. Diana says she's being investigated, too. They're saying she helped hide money. Choices have consequences, Mom. Two weeks later, I'm signing papers on my new condo. My promotion came with a sweet bonus. Enough for a down payment. As I'm arranging furniture, Emma bursts in. Your mom got another DUI. Wrapped her car around a pole. Is she alive? But the judge wasn't playing. Mandatory rehab, no exceptions. Good. Mary Frank. A detective stands in my office doorway. We need to verify some insurance claims. Three hours later, the scope of Mike and Mom's scams becomes clear. Seven relatives, four states, hundreds of thousands in fraudulent claims. Your Aunt Diana admitted to everything, Emma updates me over dinner. Said she was afraid of Mike, but they found her cut of the money. My phone buzzes, Mom's rehab center. Not answering? Boundaries, remember? Like we tell everyone in the support group? Our weekly meetings, breaking the cycle, started small. Now we need a bigger venue. You should have seen her in court, a cousin calls to tell me. Aunt Linda kept saying she didn't understand the papers she signed. Did they believe her? With Mike's history and the evidence? Not a chance. Six months later, I'm hosting Thanksgiving in my new place. Emma, Dad, and friends from our support group fill the room with laughter. My phone lights up. Mom's number. Third time today, Emma notices. She'll learn, like the rehab counselor said. Real change means accepting consequences. Looking around my beautiful home, at the life I've built, I feel peace. Mom's facing her choices. Mike's facing justice. Aunt Diana's facing reality. And me? I'm facing forward. Hey, Emma raises her glass. To breaking free. To breaking free, everyone echoes. Outside, snow begins to fall on my new beginning. Some people call it karma. I call it consequences. Either way, I'm finally free. What would you have done if you found out your own parent and their partner were committing fraud using your identity? Would you have turned them in, knowing they'd face serious consequences? Or tried to handle it privately to protect the family? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm really curious to see how you'd handle such a painful situation with someone you love. If this story resonated with you and you want to hear more stories about overcoming toxic family dynamics, hit that subscribe button and join our community. Every week, we share real experiences of breaking free and building better lives.